Hey everybody, it's Sergeant Deluxe. Can I go to hell you? A little, yeah. Today we are making one of my favorite Jamaican dishes ever. This is a very generous plate. I was just like, yes, what a oxtail. And we'll put some spinners in there, some butter beans. I like it with carrots and peppers, so I, I just did all three. If you want a vegan option, go to my brown stew chicken video because I suggest some vegan or plant-based options for that. But this is a traditional melt-in-your-mouth dish that I'm so excited about. Once you learn how to make it, it's so much better than anything you could buy anywhere. But I was really pleasantly surprised to learn that it's not hard to make, it just takes a long time. So if you've got a whole last 24 hours, including marinating, then this is a good recipe. If you want to see how to get the dish, then please stay tuned. Alrighty, so I got this from the Caribbean supermarket. I really don't like handling meat that much, but you can also find this at your Asian supermarkets if you're in Canada, like TNT or Vancouver. I don't know if they have it everywhere, but I really want to rinse this off. So I'm going to put some vinegar and cold water. I'm going to start massaging the oxtail to get all of that stuff we just saw in the bag off of the meat. I want it to run clean, so I've done this a few times, alternating the cold water and the vinegar and massaging it in. I just want to make sure that it is nice and clean before we move on to cooking. And as you can see, the water is running clear. Very important in Jamaican cooking, you gotta wash your meat. Next up, I'm gonna chop a whole onion. I'm using a really sharp knife. This will prevent your eyes from crying. If you have a dull knife, the little particles from the onion, the juice will land on a wet surface, which is your eyes. That's why you cry when you uh, chop onions. You need a very sharp knife, it'll slice right through and you won't get the crying eyes. I'm not doing a super fancy chop or anything like that. I'm just trying to get it broken down and into the bowl. And I have a very large bowl here ready to go because I'll be marinating this overnight. You could do it for at least three hours, but it does really make a difference in terms of flavor. Just chopping the ends and the tops off of a green onion or scallion, and I'm creating more surface area so that the onion can really seep into the oxtail. Just cutting it kind of small, but not too small so that I'll just right away burn when I fry the oxtail but cutting it up small enough so that we can ensure maximum flavor is gonna be added, you feel me? I'm gonna add my meat, and you wanna go in with a seasoning powder. It's just basically to enhance the flavor. This is a Caribbean brand. We also have Old Bay, which I've seen a lot of people use. I'm not gonna use that, but something that's mild in flavor. So you don't wanna go in with like taco seasoning, which is going to give you that strong cumin flavor and chili or something that's strong in flavor like that that'll overpower the dish because this seasoning isn't to be the star of the dish it's to enhance the flavors of the beef so this is just garlic pepper and herb and that's just going to start the flavor process of the oxtail again not using anything with a certain distinguished flavor profile like if you have a seasoning that you like to use and you put it in everything but I had just a little bit of my seasoning without salt in it so I thought I'd just empty the clip you feel me and put that in and I went in with a little bit of the seasoning that does have a bit of salt in it but just a little bit this is just to prepare the oxtail to hold massive amounts of flavor I'm gonna go in with Grace browning caramel sauce basically it's like molasses it gives color if you use too much it can have a bitter taste but it's basically burnt sugar almost I'm also gonna do some ketchup and some China lily soy sauce to bring a little bit more salt and to deepen that color a little bit more. I'm gonna give it a really nice mix. I wanna set it aside, put it in the fridge overnight. Like I said, you could start this at the beginning of your day, but because this takes so long to cook, I just did it the night before, threw it in the fridge and didn't have to think about it again. But you wanna give it a really nice mix so everything is evenly coated. The vinegar also helps to break down and soften the meat a little bit when you're washing it. But that's basically what, it, what you wanna have when you are finished. Wrap it with a little saran wrap, put it in the fridge. It's the next day, so it's sunlight out. 
I'm gonna work to separate the meat from the onions. You could put garlic in at this point, but because I'm chopping the garlic up a little bit more fine, I didn't want to have little bits of garlic getting burnt when I brown the meat, so I wanna make sure that I'm keeping as much of the onion off of it as possible. Any little tiny pieces like this, I'm just gonna leave because it won't make too much a difference if it is brown because those are mostly just the oxtail bone. So I'm pulling out the bigger pieces, leaving any of the smaller pieces behind and you should have your onions and your meat separated. You can go in and start prepping your other vegetables. Like I said, I like me some wonky looking veggies. So I have these carrots and a really beautiful red pepper. And usually I see people putting butter beans and carrots or butter beans and peppers. Usually not all three, but I'm trying hard to add more veggies into what I'm eating. So I decided to do the whole gang up in here and I love carrots with oxtail. I think carrots and any type of stewed beef goes really well together. So I'm just peeling the carrot after giving them a little wash. I'm chopping off the ends anywhere that might have broken off and I'm gonna do a big, thick and juicy sexy chop because these will really absorb a lot of flavor and they really hold up their shape in stewing. So I've used a lot of carrots just to bring a little bit of extra veggies and this I was like, I saw someone do this online, scooping out the inside from a few people so I wanted to try it. But you just slide around the inside and the top comes out. Anyways, just trying to be a little fancy, you know. Now I'm gonna take a smaller knife and I wanna remove that white kind of foamy bit in the inside of the pepper as well as the seeds. So I'm just carefully trying to chop that out. That part is a little bit bitter and doesn't have the nicest texture so I was just trying to take that out. These peppers have no heat whatsoever. Again, just trying to add some beautiful color and flavor. Chopping them a little thicker because they will hold up their shape a little bit but not as well as the carrots will and I'm putting them in at the same time. So a little bit thicker will do me well in this situation. And again, when you're making any type of stew, the, the cut isn't as important because it will be bro broken down quite a bit. Next, I'm gonna take some garlic. I like to chop off the ends and give it a little smush. Makes the skin really easy to peel it off. And I'm gonna chop them a little bit thinner, but not too perfect because they will be put into the stew. And I just sped it up right here because I'm like, how boring is it to watch garlic being chopped? But it looks like I'm like, got the fastest hands of all time. Putting that in our marinated. Now, it's great with Jamaican cooking to add your dry seasoning and wet or fresh ingredients. So I'm putting in a little bit of allspice or ground pimento berries and putting in a generous amount of black pepper. And I felt like I was sitting here all day so I just sped that up a little bit too, trying to put enough pepper to season the whole thing. I'm also gonna take some dry thyme and pouring that all over, giving it a nice mix. Again, I'm not sauteing this. And it's good that I'm not because the browning, which is already burnt sugar, will kind of brown even further and burn before the onions have to cook. So I'm not browning it, I'm just gonna add that into the sauce. So now I'm have heating a separate pan with a tiny bit of oil because the oxtail has a lot of fat on it already, but I just wanna protect the sugary ingredients that we put in, like the ketchup and the browning, from burning too much. And the reason why I'm browning it in a separate pan is because my pot is too small for the amount of oxtail I've got. Because I don't make this too often, I wanted to make a big batch because I like to give leftovers to my mom or drop off food to friends. Like I like to cook for other people even though I live by myself. And I wanna make sure everything is nice and brown because it will really seal the juices and the flavor into the oxtail. Again, this is all of the medium and large sizes of the oxtail that have been marinated overnight. That's why it has that beautiful, rich color. When it's this brown already, sometimes it can be hard to tell if it's brown, but you'll be able to know when you look at it closely. I've got my Dutch pan heated up a little bit already, not as high as my other one. I'm gonna add a touch of a oil into the pot and get it ready so that when I put my next batch in, it'll be heated up enough and ready to go. If you were to have it put it in a cool pan and heat it up, the meat could get a little bit stiff. So I'm just doing a light browning on this batch because it's going to sit into the pan a little bit longer than the other batch. As you can see, there's not enough room to equally brown everything. And I'm adding the second round of oxtail, making sure the heat's not too high so I don't burn it. And I'm just gonna give that a nice stir all the way around. As you can see, it's browning up a little bit more in this pan. So on this batch, I'll brown it up a little bit more. If you're not making it an obnoxious amount, 
you don't have to brown it in a separate pan. I'm gonna put that on my big burner. Uh, as I said, my pot's not that big and my stove is not that big. So I just want to crisp that up a little bit more and make sure that we're really activating those flavors and seasonings. Next up, I'm going to add my onions and all of the really tiny bits of oxtail that we didn't brown. Give it a quick toss and we'll give it a little stir, keeping that heat a little bit lower. I love that this dish came from the people of Jamaica being given throwaway meats. Oxtail was in a desirable cut of meat and now it's something that's super expensive and it is one of my favorite traditional Jamaican foods. I'm gonna fill the marinating bowl with a little bit of water just to get all that marinade that we made the night before. And I'm gonna add that to the pot. We wanna bring it back up to a higher heat now that we've added the water because that's kind of deglazing the bottom. And I'm just gonna keep adding water to that bowl until I have enough. Once it's kind of clear, then I'll just add water by, by itself. But I wanna make sure that the oxtail is just covered. Mind you, I am someone who likes a lot of oxtail gravy and you can also save the gravy to put on other things later on. I'm going to add a scotch bonnet pepper. Again, mine are frozen because they're hard to find here, so I get them from the Caribbean supermarket frozen, so that's why it's going to go a little icy. A really generous bunch of fresh thyme. I love thyme. And whole allspice or pimento berries. This is what I was saying before about the main flavor profile. It's not about the seasoning you use, but the bone kind of broth that we're making, the scotch bonnet, the thyme, the allspice, the scallions, that's the backbone of a lot of Jamaican cooking. So you've probably seen me use it a lot at this point. So you wanna add enough water till it's covered and you wanna bring it to a full boil. Once it's boiling, cover it. And you're using a dense, heavy pot like this so you can minimize the amount of steam or air that's getting out. You really wanna cook it slow and low. So now that it's on lower heat, you wanna let it cook for about two hours. I wanna pull out those thyme stems. They've done their job, they've released into the stew. As you can see, it's reduced, there's a lot of liquid. There's still a little bit of room for it to cook down. I wanna add our vegetables, so the carrots and the red pepper. Like I said, I wanted to make a lot because I don't make this very often because it takes so long, but the oxtail is already cooked and has released so much of the flavor into the gravy. I want these to cook into the gravy as well. About 10 minutes into cooking this down, I decided I was gonna add the butter beans. I don't love butter beans all the time, but I'm like, let's just do the most today. So I've drained and rinsed these, and I'm gonna add that to our pot so they can cook down to be extra soft. I just don't like when they're too firm. So making sure that the sauce is covering it all giving it a nice stir, trying not to poke it too much because I don't want all of the meat to fall off of the bones. I'm gonna let that cover. I'm gonna start to work on my spinner, so I'm adding some all-purpose flour to a bowl. I feel like sometimes I add too much spinner, so I tried to use a small bowl. I'm gonna add some Himalayan pink salt, some mild salt, and I'm gonna add a little bit of water, and I'm adding water as I go because I don't know how much I wanna use, but this is such a great thing to measure with your heart because you don't know if you maybe need a little bit more water, a little bit more flour, if it feels too wet and you can't work it into that nice dough. I like to overdo it with water than flour because it's easier to dry it up than it is to moisten it again. So I'm going back and forth. The sauce is so rich, it will absorb much of the flavor, but the salt is not really there to make them salty, but to just round out the flavor. So I'm kind of folding it in half and kneading it to activate the gluten, which is gonna give us that stretchy type of feeling with the dough. You should have a cute little piece of dough like this. I'm gonna let it rest for a second and take the lid off of the oxtail because the oxtail had a lot of fat on it and you can trim the fat at the beginning but I feel like it adds a lot of flavor. What I don't want is the grease so I'm gonna go through with a ladle and gently skim the top. This is also a good time to take the allspice berries out. They are delicious and add a lot of flavor but it's not nice to crunch on one when you're eating something, it can kind of blow your palate out. So I like to skim them because they do float to the top, but there's about a centimeter of fat on the top that I want to take out. 
The flavor is already there, but I think it's just a little bit nicer on the palette when it's not too oily. So it's just skimming it, so I'm getting the clear bits and I'm being very gentle. The part that's clear is the oil or the fat. Once you've done that, it's a good time to taste it. I decided it needed a little bit more garlic because I'm a garlic fiend, so I added some garlic powder, which will help to thicken the sauce because it is a powder. Wow, that was a lot, sorry about that. And I needed a little bit more salt, so I added the soy sauce, which will help with the dark color and flavor of it. I'm gonna give it a gentle stir again before I add my spinners because spinners tend to absorb a lot of flavor. That's why I did the, took a lot of the fat out first and try it again. Seems mother freaking perfect. So I'm gonna move on to making our spinners. So I'm taking a small ball of dough. I'm gonna roll it in my hand and make a little bit of an elongated football shape and that's what a spinner looks like. We're gonna put those in, it's all oh, so good. I'm gonna add quite a few, just finishing off the dough, being very gentle while stirring, making sure it's covered with the sauce before I cover the pot. If you stir it too quickly, it could smush them or make them have a weird shape, and I did do that a little bit, but that's okay, it was still delicious. I'm gonna bring that up to heat again and cover it on low, and this is what you should have when you are finished. So this is our beautiful stewed oxtail. I'm gonna serve it with rice and peas, didn't show my rice and peas recipe because I feel like that could be its own video on its own. But anyways, add extra sauce. We made lots of it, baby. Alrighty, so that completes the dish. This is one of my favorite Jamaican dishes, oxtail. So good. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope you'd be free with it. And also, I just want to say thank you for all the love and support on my last video. It was hard to make, and you guys really created a safe space for me to talk about things. So thank you for that. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. And don't forget to share, subscribe, and follow. Love yourselves. Stay pretty. And I'll see you guys again in the next video. Take care.